हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेन एवर वी प्लान ए मॉड्युलर किचन वॉट डू वी यूजली डू वी स्क्रॉल पिन टेरेस्ट सर्च ऑन गूगल और वॉच यूट्यूब विडियोज एंड कॉपी दोज डिजाइन्स बट रिमेंबर वन थिंग एवरी किचन स्टाइल डजंट सूट एवरी वन लाइफ स्टाइल द किचन्स यू सी एब्रॉड लुक ब्यूटिफुल नो डाउट बट इफ यू ट्राई टू कॉपी दोज आइडियाज हियर मोस्ट ऑफ देम विल बिकम ए वेस्ट ऑफ मनी वाय बिकॉज दे नीड हाई मेंटेनन्स एंड दे डोंट सूट युअर डेली कुकिंग स्टाइल सो इन टूडेज विडियो आय विल शेअर विथ यू नाईन थिंग्स यू शूड नेव्हर डू इन युअर मॉड्युलर किचन इफ यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू वेस्ट युअर हार्ड अर्न मनी सो दी फर्स्ट थिंग पीपल गेट एक्साइटेड अबाउट इज दी वॉटरफॉल सिंक सम अल्सो कॉल इट ए पियानो सिंक यू मस्ट हॅव सीन इट इन पिन टेरेस्ट पिक्चर्स और फॅन्सी यूट्यूब विडिओज राईट it looks stylish no doubt but here is the reality in those videos abroad kitchen work is usually very light they don't have to wash heavy utensils or deal with oily cooking every single day that's why it works there now when you bring it into a regular busy kitchen the first problem is water pressure this sink has 4 to 5 different spray modes and if your plumber is smart maybe he will adjust the pressure but even then after some time you will face maintenance issues now let us talk about cost a good regular stainless steel sink comes in around 7000 to 12000 rupees but this waterfall sink it easily goes to 20000 to 25000 rupees and honestly the extra features don't make a big difference for daily heavy kitchen work so who should use it if your kitchen is small you don't cook heavily maybe a family of one or two people then fine it is okay but if you have a big family lots of cooking and plenty of utensils to wash daily then trust me this sink will only give you trouble it looks amazing in pictures but in real life not practical my simple advice go for a normal ss sink strong easy low maintenance and works perfectly so the first thing i will say don't waste your money on waterfall sink if you have a busy kitchen now let us talk about the second mistake most people make in their modular kitchen many people think that under the kitchen counter if they make partitions with plywood it will get spoiled because of termites or dampness so what do they do they put marble partitions instead and they feel now there will be no termite problem no moisture problem but this is actually a big myth why because when you install baskets or drawers inside those baskets run on channels and the channels are fixed with screws now marble is a stone it cannot hold screws the same way wood does after 5 to 6 months with the regular opening and closing of drawers the screws start shaking inside the stone they become loose and slowly your channel stop working properly the drawers start wobbling and the whole system loses strength so yes marble looks strong but in reality it gives you more maintenance problems if you still want stone then use granite because granite is harder and holds up a little better than marble but the best option always go for good quality plywood and which plywood choose bwp plywood boiling waterproof remember this word bwp this type of ply comes with a warranty of 10 to 25 years and it is resistant to water and termites in plywood screws fit properly channels work smoothly and you won't face maintenance issues so the second biggest mistake people make is using marble partitions inside the kitchen if you avoid it and use the right ply your kitchen will last much longer and work much better now let us talk about hobs and induction stoves what do we usually do we fit a built in hob on the counter top and sometimes along with it we also add an induction hob looks stylish right but here is the thing these setups are based only for kitchens where cooking is light 
If your kitchen is used daily for full meals, frying, tadkas, parathas, heavy cooking, then built-in hobs and fitted induction units can become a headache. Why? Because the maintenance is too much. Suppose the hob or the induction stops working. To repair it, the whole unit has to be removed. And if the model is discontinued or parts are not available, then you might even have to cut your countertop again to fit a new one. That is extra cost and extra mess. The biggest issue with fitted induction hobs is their yearly maintenance. Every time you will have to remove the whole fitting, send it for service and reinstall it. And if it can't be fixed, you are stuck with a gap in your stone top. So my advice, if your kitchen is small, not much cooking happens and you don't mind occasional servicing, then a built-in hob is okay. But if you want a hassle-free kitchen, then go for modern freestanding stoves or portable induction cooktops. These come in stylish designs now. Look great and you don't have to cut your countertop or worry about replacements. When we plan a modular kitchen, one of the biggest mistakes people make is in choosing the countertop. These days, we see glossy tiles for countertops. They look shiny, attractive and even luxurious at first sight. White or black, the shine really pulls us in and we feel, yes, this is what I want in my kitchen. But the truth is, it is a mistake. Once you start using it daily, scratches appear very quickly. Within just one or two months, that glossy shines becomes dull and the countertop starts looking old and worn out. Not just tiles, even marble or nano white slabs you will often see them sold in series like G3, G5, G7. They all look good initially, but the problem is maintenance. These materials stain, scratch or lose their shine faster, especially in a busy kitchen where we cook every day. So what should you choose? Granite is the best option. It is durable, long-lasting and you will get beautiful varieties in the same price range as tiles or nano white. If you want something more modern, quads is another good choice. It comes in many colors and patterns and compared to tile or marble, it performs much better. That's why my recommendation is simple, go for granite or quads. If you choose others, you will end up spending more time and money on maintenance and that is not worth it. Now let us talk about one big plus where people waste money, the chimney. Most people buy a slanted chimney because it looks modern and stylish. No doubt it looks very good, but the problem, the glossy glass finish on it. Within just two to three days, you will start seeing oil stains and smudges. And if you don't clean it quickly, your kitchen, especially an open kitchen, will start looking dull and messy. So yes, you can go for a slanted chimney, but be ready for regular cleaning and maintenance. Now, if you do choose a slanted chimney, keep a few things in mind. The suction power should be at least 1200 to 1500 m3 per hour. Along with the chimney, you must also have an exhaust fan. And don't forget a window for natural ventilation. These three things together will make your chimney work properly. But honestly, a flat chimney is still one of the best options. Why? Because it sits right above your stove, so the suction is more direct and effective. The only complaint earlier was that it used to hit your head while cooking. Now there is a new option in the market, the slanted double draft chimney. This design combines the benefits of both flat and slanted chimneys. It is slightly more expensive, but it gives excellent suction. Perfect for kitchens where you do heavy cooking, frying or tadkas. One more thing, kitchens abroad are very different. Many times people just reheat food or bake. So their chimneys don't need to work that hard. But in our kitchens where we make curries, parathas and full meals, 
you need stronger suction and better ventilation so always design your chimney setup based on your cooking style not just how it looks in pinterest or youtube videos the next big mistake people make while building a modular kitchen and this is where most of the money gets wasted is on hardware you will see people spending 1 lakh 1 and a half even 2 lakhs on their kitchen but then for the hinges and drawer channels they pick local cheap brands now let me tell you the truth if the hardware is not of good quality it will give you problems in just 2 to 3 years screws will get loose hinges will stop working channels won't slide properly and sometimes the whole piece has to be replaced because it can't even be repaired why does this happen because the steel used in cheaper hardware is not the right grade they use 202 grade or some mixed material which rusts and corrodes quickly but good brands use 304 or 316 grade stainless steel which lasts for years without trouble so my advice always invest in good hardware don't compromise here use top international brands like hetich hafle or any other reputed company in your country yes they cost more but think long term they will easily last 10 to 15 years without giving you headaches trust me in a modular kitchen hardware is the heart spend wisely here and you will actually save money in the long run now let us talk about another big mistake people make with modular kitchens see when we make a kitchen most of us focus only on how it looks we want it to look modern deluxe stylish right but in that process we often forget one very important thing how easy it is to work in the kitchen every day that's why many people choose a high glossy finish laminates acrylic sheets pu polish or sometimes even mirror like glossy panels at first it looks amazing shiny reflective very premium but the problem starts after a few months of use the moment you touch the cabinet your fingerprints will show the moment you cook something like curry or tadka oil splashes and stains will start sticking on that glossy surface and within just 6 to 7 months your kitchen starts looking dirty patchy and very difficult to maintain so my suggestion is don't focus only on looks focus on practicality and maintenance go for finishes that look good but are also easy to clean and maintain if you still love glossy you can use it smartly maybe on some parts of the kitchen but not everywhere because remember this is not just about design a kitchen is a working space you should feel comfortable working in it every single day looks are important but maintenance is even more important now one more very important thing about modular kitchens most of the time we design them only by thinking of what we need today for example maybe today you don't have a dishwasher but tomorrow you might want one maybe right now you don't have a water purifier but in the future you will definitely use it or maybe you will upgrade to an induction hob ladder new appliances keep coming and you should be ready for them that's why i always say when you are planning your kitchen keep extra electrical points not just one at least 3 to 4 extra outlets and make sure they are properly designed one point for the microwave one for induction one for water purifier one spare for future appliances because once the kitchen is done after a few years if you suddenly want to add something new then what happens you will have to break the tiles do wiring again make a mess and spend more money why go through all that headache so when you are investing so much in a modular kitchen spend a little wisely on electrical planning that way your kitchen will stay future ready and you won't have regrets later now let us talk about the height of your kitchen counter see what usually happens when your kitchen is being made 
द मेसन विल कीप दी काउंटर एनीवेयर बिटवीन 32 टू टू थर्टी सिक्स इंचेस इन हाइट स्टैंडर्ड इज अराउंड थर्टी टू इंचेस समटाइम्स थर्टी थ्री समटाइम्स इवन थर्टी सिक्स बट हियर इज द थिंग हू इज गोइंग टू वर्क इन दिस किचन द हाइट ऑफ दैट पर्सन रियली मैटर्स इफ द काउंटर इज टू हाई और टू लो कंपेयर टू देअर हाइट इट बिकम्स अनकम्फर्टेबल इफ द पर्सन इज टॉल दे विल हैव टू बेंड अ लॉट If the person is short, they will struggle to reach and work properly. So, what should you do? The best way is to design the counter height based on the user's comfort. And nowadays, there is also a new trend that works really well. Cooking area, where you will chop and cook food, keep this counter a little lower so it is easier to work without strain. Washing area, that is sink side. Keep this counter a little higher, because when you wash utensils, you don't want to bend too much. This small change not only makes working in the kitchen easier, but also looks stylish. A counter with slight height variation actually looks very modern and beautiful. It doesn't have to be all in one flat line. So if you follow this along with the other tips I shared. your modular kitchen will need less maintenance and will be much more comfortable to use for many years but tell me in the comments have you made any of these mistakes in your kitchen or do you have your own tip to share i would love to learn from your experience see you in the next video thanks for watching